All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. Today we're going to talk about the UK variant and a new study which um, which presents that the variant is more contagious, more infectious, and is more de deadly as well, especially in men. And the possibility of how much more deadly is anywhere from 30% more to 100% more. That means almost double the number of deaths compared to the wild type. There are certain um, factors to be looked at other than just seeing this on the surface of it. So I wanted to put this in front of us all and see if, number one, was I wrong that I have always said that something that becomes more contagious is usually less uh, deadly. And secondly, um, what is the actual data? What are the confounding factors? What are the um, what are the things that may still make this number maybe not exactly the same number or may make it the same? So let's start with this discussion. I think it is important. I might look like a little bit of a fear mongerer today because of the way the study is. But at the same time, I think I'm going to continue to balance this out as well. So uh, this fear mongering is not going to be by intention. It's just that the, this is the way study is. So let's start. So this is drbean.com. And then here is a good article. This kind of summarizes the study very well. It is in New York Times. UK virus variant is probably deadlier. So see, probably deadlier. You would see the same thing in all headings. So please make sure that you pick up these words because there is still some fudge factor in this. This is the study. The study has been accepted. So if you see here, accepted 25th February. So today is March 11. We are a little bit late in discussing it. But here is that study. And an important part of the conclusion of the study I wanted to share with you. So we have the context in our mind. The point authors are making with this study is the following. They're saying healthcare capacity planning and national and international control policies are all impacted by this finding with increased mortality, lending weight to the argument that further coordinated and stringent measures uh, are justified to reduce deaths from SARS-CoV-2. So the point they're making is that, number one, people criticize the government, the British government, that they had locked down near Christmas and New Year. They say that was actually fine, a good thing that they did. And secondly, they're saying that the stringent lockdowns that are going on at this time are actually a good thing as well. The third thing they are saying is that, hey, hurry up with the vaccinations. I would add a fourth thing to this, that if this really is the case, then hurry up with ivermectin approval as well. You would actually get much better outcomes with that and much rapid and, and cheaper and easier outcomes compared to all of the remaining systems capacity planning again. So with this, let's look at the study itself. And I'm going to go over my illustrations, and then I'm going to go back to study as well. This is a pretty long study. So uh, please lend me your time today. It is not going to be 10 minutes. I'll try to be as short as possible. But still, there is a lot of data to dissect and look into. So first of all, <clears throat> the variant that we are talking about, that is the B117, or the variant of concern 2020, December and one, the variant number one. And I have done two talks about this in the past. In one of the talks, I actually figured out with all of us here that what are what is the exact change in it. And in the second talk, we discussed what is the impact of it. So I have those videos linked in the description. I want to give you the, the punchline first, the spilling the beans first. And that is what they found was that there is a range of 32% to 104% increase in death rate, especially in men. It is lesser in women, actually almost negligible in women compared to men. But at the same time, let's also look at the absolute number of deaths. And that is, if you see this number over here, 2.5 out of 
every thousand people infected from the wild type, original type, Wuhan type, versus 4.1 deaths per thousand in the new variant. So, of course, almost double. Uh, we would see some um, some further data as well to kind of put this in perspective. This is a matched cohort study. And a very important thing to keep in mind is that this study is done with the pillar two tests. And the pillar two tests are, what that means is this. In Britain, there are two types of, two categories of tests, pillar one and pillar two. Pillar one tests are done where it is absolutely must to test someone, for example, healthcare workers or hospitalized patients. Pillar two tests are in community where somebody can go and get themselves tested. So the data is based on the community testing. That means the data is mostly based on the people who have been feeling sick. For example, I had the nasal congestion and so I go to the community. So this was not this data is not based on people who are hospitalized. Then what they did was they took that data and then they followed those people for 28 days and then they saw in the wild type versus the new type, the variant type, what was, what was the comparison of deaths that occurred within 28 days? And you would see that this is actually going to become a confounding factor as well as we discuss more. The assay, the test, the PCR test that they used is the TAC path assay. And we have talked about this in the past as well in the previous discussions, that this is a test which fails on the new variant. There are normally three signals. That means if there is a test, let's say this is a test. And this test is going to identify a virus, the SARS-CoV-2. It has three varying antibodies in it that would connect to various parts of the virus to figure out uh, all those. If they are all present, that means it is SARS-CoV-2. However, in the case of variant, because there is a mutation on the spike protein, one of the signal fails for this test specifically. And so this test is now being used to identify the variant. And I have done this discussion in detail. Continuing on. The study has the data from 1st October 2020 till 29th January 2021. What they did was they had actually taken a very large number of patients, but then they had to match them. And to match them, finally, they arrived at after matching very age, sex, ethnicity, location, time of getting sick or becoming positive and so on. Finally, they arrived at 109,812 total number of patients. They divided those in positive and negative. And what does that mean? So on this test, the wild, the wild type, the original type is positive, meaning all the three signals for the spike protein appear on it, or all the three signals for detection of SARS-CoV-2 are positive on it. They all light up. But if the variant is present, then out of three lights, two lights light up and one light does not, or one signal is not detected. So that is called S negative. So that is how in the study these are named. So for our purposes, wherever we say S negative, that is the new variant. And wherever we say S positive, that is the wild type. And whenever we say wild type, that means the original Wuhan type. And the new is the B117. Now, what did they have to match? They have to match, they had to match a number of things. They had to match by age, sex, ethnicity, index of multiple deprivations, and then lower tier local authority region. So the geography from where the person is, date of the test becoming positive, And then finally, they were following them for 28 days. Why is this important? This is important because the variant, the new variant, is supposed to infect rapidly. That means the timing from the day of the infection to the day of any negative or positive outcome may be fast. Because of that, what they had to do was they had to see when does a person become positive, And then they followed them. First, they followed them for 14 days. 
and it seemed like within 14 days there was no difference in mortality. Then they continued to follow the data for 28 days and they found that when you add 14 more days, then there is a difference of almost double the deaths in the variant versus the uh, original. So we'll look at that result as well. Actually, let me show you that here. So if you go down to this, uh, this was how they decided who would participate. So they had a big number of people, 1.9 million, all, I believe. And then they kept filtering them out to see who can be excluded and, and who can be included. And finally, they reached 109,000 S gene negative and S gene positive. And that is how they then compared them. But here is here is an important data point to see. Look at this graph. Look at this divergence here. So what that is saying is that for 14 days, if you just take somebody who becomes positive today and then follow them up to 14 days, then there was no difference in mortality between the wild type and the new type. But if you go beyond 14 days, then the uh, wild type had less mortality and the variant had more mortality. Now, I want to put a seed right now in our mind, which we would discuss again. And that seed is this, and the authors actually talk about it as well. It's not something hidden. It's not a gotcha. They know it as well. And that is, look, we are suspecting or we are saying that the new type infects fast. That means it is going to cause damage fast as well. That means it is virulent more. That means it causes rapid tissue destruction, correct? If that is the case, it is going to cause death faster as well. On the other hand, the original type, because that is not as fast in infections, it is possible that it would continue to go on beyond 28 days to kill someone. So it is actually possible that if the number of deaths, let's say, are four per thousand here with the uh, new type, then maybe after, after, let's say, 35 days, the number of deaths may actually be equal. It's just that one is slower and one is faster. But they have not gone on beyond 28. So till 14, they were same. At 28th day, these became different and they stopped there. Maybe if they had continued on for another 10 days, they would have seen that they became same again. But they stopped at 28 days and this is the conclusion. So I wanted to show you this chart as well. So going back here, what is the result? And I am intentionally not going into the detail of the change because we have done that discussion before. I want to look at the data and the factors that may confound this data, meaning make it not 100% um, accurate for the outcomes or uh, maybe not confounded. So let's look at the results. The result in the study is that when they saw people till 28th day, there was 1.64% higher death rate in the patients who were infected with the new variant. So that is 64% more, and that is the average. In a range, 32% to 2.04, so 32% more deadly to almost 104% more deadly, so almost double. And the confidence interval had a p-value of p0.001, which is significant. So this number that we are seeing is significant, However, please keep in mind, just like I showed you that graph, there are confounding factors for which there may not be adjustments available. The absolute number of deaths, it went up from 2.5 per thousand to 4.1 per thousand, especially in men. And as they had said, the basic conclusion is that number one, what the British government did near the Christmas and New Year was correct. And number two, they should continue to do more lockdown. That is what is the basic thing. And then figure out what to do with the vaccines. Now, let's look at the reasons that may make a virus. So the question that should be in all of our mind, the cool beans here, should be 
how come a virus that is spreading faster is actually more lethal as well? So it is spreading faster, it is killing faster as well, but still spreading more than the other one which is killing less. So that is a basic question to try to answer. If we go with the study, whatever I have been saying in terms of something that spread faster is less lethal was wrong. And if we look at some of these confounding factors, there may be some explanations here as well. And again, my bias here is not to prove that I was right. I just want to make sure that we can put this in the correct container and understand where, how much afraid and scared we should be. So look, how can a virus be more lethal? Number one, of course, when it becomes more destructive. If a virus develops a habit of killing more cells or finds ways of killing them more, then that virus would cause more deaths. In this case, the virus actually did not find the ways to kill more cells. It is just that it has found ways to enter cells more rapidly, which results in killing of those cells. More infectious and contagious virus. So that is what it is, what is happening, and that the virus is more infectious. It is binding to the cell with better affinity. It is entering the cells more faster, and that means it infects them and then kills them faster as well. Contagious means that now this virus is going to be shed in higher loads as well. So if I got sick with the new virus today, and then by 24 hours I start shedding, let's say, my shedding will be more in viral load compared to somebody who was sick with the wild type. Then because it is shedding fast, because it is infecting fast, then it is spreading fast as well. And this is something that authors agree as well, that that may mean that it is spreading fast to the nursing homes too, which will mean that more fragile people might become sick with this one because it is just spreading faster. And there is an interesting component in this study, and that is they say we actually do not have a comparison of comorbidities. Their closest age-based match is five years age difference. And they are saying that based on the age closeness, we are expecting comorbidities to be similar. So they actually do not have that data, which can make a difference in comparing these two viruses. Then overwhelmed healthcare facilities. It is also possible that in a community when the virus is spreading fast and people are ending up in the hospitals, there are two outcomes of that. Number one, the hospitals are overwhelmed. Number two, the staff is overwhelmed. Not only they are tired, but they are getting infected and exposed as well, which would cause absenteeism in the staff, which would cause staff to stay at home, which would reduce the staff at the hospital care, which would then result in more deaths. So that is also possible. And again, I'm not just making those things up. This is something that authors agree as well, that yes, this is possible. Then wild type. So this is something I'll actually show in a graph as well. The wild type, that is the original type, presenting earlier. So let's say two people became sick. And one person became sick with the original, and the other person became sick with the um, variant. Their presentation time difference and their speed of causing infection and death time difference would cause a problem with measurement as well. So they actually uh, understand that authors. Then how about this? If the, this is something that I have been saying, if the variant is less, um, virulent. Virulent means the tendency or capacity to cause symptoms. So if the variant is less virulent, then it is possible that we actually in a community have more spread of the variant, less people getting sick, and a smaller number that is getting sick is going to the hospital. And then from there, somebody, some are dying. I'll give you an example in a chart in a second. And if this is the case, which I think should be the case as well, because this is the only way a more um, infective pathogen can be less virulent. And that's what I've been saying. 
comorbidities data is not available, so we cannot really compare. And then study did not analyze nursing homes. This study is done with the pillar two tests. That means outpatient testing facilities and tests being done there. It actually is not a study done on nursing homes or study done in hospitals or study done on the high risk patients. So it is really a study done on relatively younger population or the population that is going out for testing. So now let's look at these factors, some of them in a form of some graphs. So first one here. This one is a graph of the original virus. This one is the graph for the variant. Imagine for a second if the variant is actually causing more infections and is spreading faster. However, imagine for a second that the variant is actually not making people too sick, which is a logical thing. A virus that is spreading faster should have less virulence. If that is the case, if that is the case, then there is going to be a large population of the people who will be infected by variant, but we will not be able to count them. And I'll give you an example like this. Imagine that this is actually 1,000 people. And out of 1,000, four people have, or two people have died. On the other hand, this one is original virus. It is not that fast spreading because it is more virulent and it causes people to start becoming sick very fast. And so they stay home and they do not spread it to others or they end up in hospitals. Because of this, the number of asymptomatic patients are lesser. And so let's say this one is a total of 100 people, including the asymptomatic. Out of those, let's say once again, one person has died. For our purpose here, let's make this one two. So two people died on the new side. One person died on the original side. And we counted the same 100 people. So now from counting the 100 people, we say, that the variant is 2% death rate and original is 1%. So I'm just making up examples here. But if the variant is actually 1,000 and out of 1,000 there are two, then that is 0.002%. So this, once again, authors actually agree with this, that we have no idea if the variant is causing more spread asymptomatically. And if that is the case, then what is the spread is not known. So the total number, exact number is not known out of which the death percentage have, has to be seen. So they are saying we are only able to see those that presented. However, their conjecture is that possibly variant is more infectious, is more virulent as well. So this, this hypothesis is wrong in their opinion. In my opinion, this is actually much more possible than the other way around. Second confusion or difficulty in assessment is the following. So once again, let's look at this part. Let's say this is the wild type, that is the original type. Original type is slow progressing. So when somebody becomes sick with it, it does not progress that fast that within 28 days it kills. We actually know that the original type the death average time to death is anywhere from six weeks to onwards. They should not have just tested for 28 days. They should have gone to six weeks and onwards. But they didn't do it. They actually tested within four weeks. And it is understandable that the variant, which is more infectious, can cause people to die faster as well. But that doesn't mean that it has become more lethal in everyone. All that means is that if we have two people, they both are going to respond with the cytokine storm. One person is infected with the wild type. The other person is infected with the variant. The person with the variant might die within 28 days and the person from the wild type might die within 50 days. But if you only count them at 28th day, you would say that the person with the wild type is still alive and the person with the variant has died. So variant is double the deadly virus. So in my opinion, again, I am adding my opinions here. 
if you look at their study, I am wrong in saying that this should be less virulent. Um, I'm adding my opinion here that cutoff date of 28 days is actually wrong. Just like they saw that at 40, 14 days, number of deaths were equal. Similarly, at probably 30, 50, 60 days, the number of deaths may have been equal as well. But anyways, this is what they are showing. So this is the second confusing part. So if you see here, the, the wild type is progressing slow. So 28 days at cutoff date. So it, first it became, it made somebody mildly symptomatic, then that increased in severity. And finally, the person died after 28 days. Here, the variant is more infectious. So what it is doing is, and let's say more virulent, I shouldn't call it more virulent. It's rapidly infecting. So more virulent means that a person who is not going to respond to wild is responding to this one with more disease. That is not the case. It's just that the disease progress is rapid. So here the variant arrived. It had mild symptoms for some time and then very quickly converted to serious and then very quickly killed within 28 days. And if that is the case, if you count them both, here this death occurs, let's say, at 40 days. Here the death occurred at 28 days and you would measure them as variant is bad. Continuing on, hospital staff becoming overwhelmed. And there are, as I said before, there is multiple factors in there. Hospital supplies, beds availability, oxygen availability, drugs availability, the hospital staff's own energy levels and the uh, exertion levels, then their own exposure, and then fatigue and absenteeism, all of that has to be checked in as well. And that can cause a factor too. They tried to remove this factor, and I'll explain how. But they tried to make sure that this is not an issue in the data. Then if you look at this one, rapid spread to at-risk communities. So once again, if you see, this is, let's say, original. Original is spreading slower, but it is going to cause deaths as well, while the variant is spreading faster, and that is causing deaths as well. So then in that spread faster, it is ending up in the nursing homes where we already know that the death ratio is higher. If that is the case, even when the number number of people infected is the same, the type of people infected might become different. And there may be more elderly that become um, a victim to this. So they actually try to correct for this one as well to say, let's compare age to age. And so try to adjust for this. Then finally, comorbidities, not finally, just one more factor. And I talked about it just before as well. Uh, absent comorbidities. So the comorbidities here and here in these two groups are not known. They do not have that data to say, did the people with, let's say, diabetes or cancers or immunosuppressions uh, or some other reason, did they die more or less? So they actually do not know that. And one more, which authors do not discuss it, other than saying that, hey, government did a great job of actually causing the people to stay at home. But remember, we talked about it that before Christmas, there were so many parties and people were just talking and they were dancing in the in the streets. So were there any super spreader events? So now we have one variant that already spreads faster. And then on top of that, we conduct super spreader events that would just give it a chance to spread too fast. So these can be factors that are possible. So now let's continue. How did they try to minimize some of them? So here is what they did. Number one, on age side, they tried to keep the age within five years of range from each side. So that is how they tried to match that. This is why the study is called a matched cohort study. The second thing is that they tried to find patients out of these 1.9 million patients. They tried to find those patients who were within the similar community 
and within one day's difference of getting their positive test, and one had the wild type and the other had the variant, meaning they tried to find people from the same community. And here is their problem. The problem that they experienced was the following. So if you look on at this chart, in the beginning, the wild type was more prevalent. So let's say when there was only the wild type, at that time, there was no variant. So if you take data from people at that time and sequence their viruses, that are all going to be wild type. So you cannot compare it. Similarly, when the variant became so prevalent that there is just the new variant and there is no wild type, if you take that data, that also is useless because you cannot compare it to wild type. So there was a narrow window of time when the variant and the wild type, they both existed almost equally in the society. And they had to take this data and work with it. And of course, they agree and they acknowledge that this is the right way to do it. But it doesn't really, they say this was a difficulty. And I can understand that maybe this was a smaller number of days. They, maybe they don't even know which days were the days when the variants and the original type were equal. That imbalance would also cause a skewing of the data. And again, I'm not making these things up to minimize this. I am sharing what is in the paper. And as usual, journalists have not looked at those things. They have just picked up, hey, this can cause double the deaths, and that these are the headings. But if you see in the headings, there are words like virus variant is probably deadlier. And if you see the their study as well, they in the study, they use the word seems to be. So if I go down here to the end of the study, you would see here as well. See, conclusion, the variant of concern, in addition to being more transmissible, seems to be more lethal. So even they, the authors, after giving all this data and scare, still are not fully behind their own uh, message they are saying seems to be more lethal. This seems to be more lethal is converted to probably deadlier, maybe deadlier, and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure that we can at least look at the data in a little more visual way. So here, how did they match the people five years? Number one. Number two, they tried to get those people who became positive. They only tried to match those who became positive within one day's range from each other. So somebody who became positive, let's say, on third November, then they tried to find someone who matched their uh, age and gender and ethnicity, but within November 2nd to 4th, so within one day of this time. They also tried to pick up patients who were within the same geographical setting. So they tried to find people who matched each other but are from the same community so that the majority of them have similar socioeconomic stratum. Now, characteristic, we talked about it. I'm just going to repeat it. Men were affected more than women. The mean age was 66.9, where the effect was the most. And then even after controlling for the factors, the mortality increase was at least 1.5 to 1.7. So they are saying that if you control all the factors, just like the factors that we discussed, they still believe that with the variant, the death rate is 50% to 70% more. The uh, number of deaths, so in their study, the number of deaths for the new type were 227, and the old type were 141. Another thing that was interesting for them was that the cycle threshold of the PCR test was lesser in the new compared to the old. And there are two answers to that. And that, again, causes a confusion in the system. One answer is that because the newer virus, the new variant, replicates so fast that even at a smaller cycle threshold, the virus load is very much in the original swab. So even with smaller number of amplifications, you still end up with a lot of virus because the beginning amount was a lot. The other possibility is that the cycle threshold, only those people who become 
Most of the people are asymptomatic with the variant, but those who actually become severely ill or are in on that path, they end up getting them te themselves tested and that causes the lower cycle threshold to detect the virus. So again, they say it is either a feature of the new virus that it creates more load or it is a bias in the system. So these are the uh, discussion points for this one. I would just go back to the study's conclusion once more. Their conclusion is that, hey, we have a variant that is more spready, more contagious, more infectious, more virulent, and more lethal. Everything is more, almost double. They do say that, uh, let's put it in the absolute numbers as well, and they say instead of two per thousand, this is four per thousand. So the number should be kept in mind. But they say that this is how it is uh, increasing. Of course, they also are thinking that this would mean that if there are combinations of these variations, then the virus would continue to escape from the, let's say, vaccines or from the other infections uh, or the other immunity that we have built. So this is the discussion. Uh, I hope um, it made sense at least to understand what they're talking about. How about we do this? Uh, how about we stop here? We are still 36 minutes, so it is still relatively short. And then we do some chit chat. Uh, what do you think? Absolutely. Marie says, so early treatment is imperative. Ivermectin, hydroxy. Yes, absolutely. Even prophylaxis. So um, OK, so let's do uh, Siddhartha. Thank you very much. I actually thought that there were many confusing factors in there, but they just kept pushing the agenda. And I at least wanted to just sincerely present what they're saying, but also create the thinking of here are the confusions or gaps in the data. So I'm going to I'm going to come back. Oh, I did not say this. Um, please like, subscribe, and share this video. And if you wanted to support this work, there are links in the description. One is to buy me coffees. Another one is to support this work in general. And then there is one more to become my patron. So thank you very much for your help. And let's talk again.